Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but uh, I'm going to do an update on the situation in Hollywood with the writer's strike. Now, it's all over the place now that uh, the WGA and Amp Tip have reached an agreement and there is a lot of uh, celebration amongst Hollywood writers. The thing is, is it might be premature celebration. That, that can be a problem sometimes if you get too excited too early because now that people are picking apart the deal, they're noticing some things and they're pointing out that the market is contracting and they're saying, hey, this means that, yeah, the, the writers that are left, uh, uh, they, they might get paid better, but there's probably not going to be as many of them and that the studios seem to have some wiggle room uh, in the language of the contract. So it might not quite be the win that they were hoping for. And this is kind of what we said we thought would happen, that yeah, some writers may get a really good deal and they're gonna reward people that perform, but the vast majority of writers are not performing. Let's be, let's be honest, just like the vast majority of TV shows and movies don't really perform. The vast majority of streaming shows don't perform. There are, what, 11,000 plus members in the WGA and how many of them are writing TV regularly? 11,000 people. You know, I see a lot of the same names on shows again and again and again and again. You cannot tell me that all 11,000 of those people are uh, actively writing TV scripts, right? So we're, we're gonna talk about this. So I think, I think we're gonna have a little bit of a, a Hollywood Writers Highlander going on here. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys uh check out clownfishtv.com check out piratesandprincesses.net for more objective disney news and uh, this is coming from deadline and i have another article from pajiba and you have to really scroll down to get to the the meat of it which is basically not ever what is this not everybody's gonna make it not everybody's gonna make it tv business faces further contraction as marketplace reopens, the bubble has burst. So yeah, good news, everybody. Uh, you got your deal, but there might not be any jobs anyway because the market is contracting. And I think this whole strike, I, I honestly think it was uh, you know, the studios getting together and deciding that they've spent entirely too much money on content that doesn't perform. And I think it was by design. I think they're like, how how long can we go? Can we go long enough to cancel a bunch of deals, which they've already done? Can we go long enough to be able to plead poverty and not green light a bunch of stuff? You know, can we go long enough to uh, get our ducks in a row and try to line up some foreign content that doesn't use uh, WGA or sag after a uh, talent, you know? And I think that's what they've, they've used this downtime for. I think it was by design guys. I really do. You know, I, unfortunately, Love it or hate it, the house never loses. And I think in this case, uh, I think the writers that are left, those who perform, are going to be paid better. But uh, there, there aren't going to be as many shows. So again, coming from Deadline, after 148 days of a WGA strike that ground production to a halt, put tens of thousands out of work, everyone in Hollywood has a reason to celebrate this week after the Guild and the studios reached a tentative agreement on Sunday night and the strike came to an end. The WGA leadership, which approved the deal yesterday and sent it to the membership for a vote, has called exceptional the agreement. Has called the agreement exceptional? Has called exceptional the agreement, which includes AI guardrails, viewership-based residuals, writer's room minimums, pay raises, and other major gains. Now, the writer's room minimums are not quite what they were looking for. I think that, uh, you know, you can... As I understand it, you can have like one person work on a show as long as it's it's uh, under a certain number of episodes. And then they're like, okay, we'll mandate like three people if it's so many episodes. And you get more people the longer it goes. As I understand it, just kind of glancing at it this morning. You know. Strikers who spent months on the picket lines to protect the future of writing as a profession have been sharing their joy on social media, telling each other excitedly, let's get back to work. For those working in television, however... It is not clear what kind of business and marketplace they're going to be going back to. It likely won't be what they left five months ago. No shit. No shit. Again, I think the strike was by design. I think these studios needed to cut back on content. And this was an easy out. Like, yeah, let them go on strike. And then we can just, you know, cancel some deals. 
and say that the strike is the reason that we're not greenlighting more content because we don't have the money to pay for more content. And then by the time we get everything going again, you know, we'll, we'll pay the people who are producing content that, that we know is going to sell, that people are going to watch more, but everybody else, you're, you're out of luck. We just don't have the money. Accelerated contraction, more competition, reeled in budgets, fewer overall deals, and possibly more cancellations are some of the things industry sources are preparing for. One thing they're not anticipating, a flood of spec scripts. It's another testament to how high the stakes were for the writers this time and how much they rose to the occasion. Again, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, one representative recalled the writer's attitude in 2007 as, while I'm waiting for the strike to be over, I need to be prepared, resulting in a slew of spec scripts written during the work stoppage. Not this time. Everyone had good intentions to take time and write, but not a lot of people did. People were busy. They took picket lines seriously, and they were there every day. Or... Or you could have maybe built a life raft because not everybody is going to survive the Hollywood purge. You know, just like the comic book industry. Everybody thinks it's going to be there forever. You know, you could try to build your own social media platform or something. You know, you don't have to cross a picket line, but you could have done something. I'm just, I'm just saying, if it were me, if it were me, I would have tried to find something else to do. Just in the off chance that the strike went on for a year. I mean, you don't know. You don't know how long it's going to go on for. It wasn't just the daily physical presence at the picket lines. They were also invested in the strike and their emotional focus was there. Well, congratulations. And look, I, I mean it. I, I do mean it. Uh, I know people think I'm being facetious about this, but like, you know, if you can get that money, get it. But what I'm telling you is that the market usually self-corrects. And what is going to happen is, yes, the people who are left will get paid more, but you're not all going back to work. I hate to break to you. There's not enough room for 11,500 of you to go back to work. It's not going to happen. Not at, not at the rates you're getting. As a result, there won't be many spec scripts. Uh, there won't be as many scripts as people anticipated at the start. The observation was corroborated by writer David H. Steinberg. In an emotional message posted on X on Monday, he shares the anxiety created by the end of the strike and the routine of daily picketing. An experience he found incredibly uplifting because of the wonderful solidarity as he readjusts to a daily routine of writing. Writers got to go back to work. They got to write. I've talked to so many writers, and I think most of them did not write a strike spec, he said. But we still feel like there's going to be a ton of material flooding the market and a buying frenzy in the immediate aftermath of a strike. Not so fast. Indeed, there are a ton of projects Ready to go out when networks and streamers reopen for business, the buyers do not expect the type of frenzy we have seen over the last decade. Many pitches had been held back from last winter and early spring amid a terrible market as buyers batten down the hatches in anticipation of a potential strike. No one is buying. This is the worst marketplace I've ever experienced, said a veteran studio exec in April. The big question is how receptive the marketplace will be Post strike across the board, what I have heard from buyers is they will be buying less and making less because it costs more. Again, the people who are going to benefit from the gains in the strike are those who will actually be getting work, but that doesn't guarantee everybody work. It just means that if you get work, you're going to get a better deal. That's, that's all that that means. Back in April, there were already indications that the reasons for the dramatic industry slowdown were deeper and went far beyond the strike. A potential strike forces everyone to go on pause at the same time, but they all needed to reframe and pivot as they have so much that is not working, one insider said. Said a major buyer last week, the strike just sped up the inevitable pullback. I suspect everyone will be doing less. They planned this. They planned it. They wanted to cancel a lot of stuff. They wanted to cancel shows. They wanted to cancel deals. They had buyer's remorse about a lot of the stuff they greenlit. And they manipulated the strike, I believe, to be able to have an excuse to uh, push that button, that force majeure button, and cancel a bunch of big deals. Notice how they went and they canceled 
a bunch of the deals from like Greg Berlanti and and uh, who else, Mindy Kaling and some other you know big names, right? They canceled those deals. And then they came back to the, the bargaining table. They're like, okay, now that we got rid of these really expensive people, J.J. Abrams, he was another one. Like, now we'll talk. Now we'll talk. Because that's that's our biggest right there. They can they can go because I don't want to be saddled paying for, you know, what was it? J.J. Uh, Abrams, what was it like a half a billion dollar deal or some crazy shit like that? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, nope, nope, nope. Hollywood's not going to be the same. In an appearance at the Code Conference today, Casey Bloys, chairman and CEO of HBO and Max Content, said that the strike won't change the type of shows they're planning to order, but did call this an existential moment for the industry. There's a lot of changing and shifting. We're coming out of the COVID bubble, and we're still dealing with the fallout from that. It's an uncertain time. It's a scary time. Cancellations and unrenewals. Unwork. We're going to call unwork. During the strike, there were a handful of renewals and a slew of cancellations as networks and streamers reevaluated their slates. That is continuing. This is coming from Deadline. This is not coming from Breitbart. This is not coming from Fox News. This is not coming from some alt-right rag. They are telling you that even if you go back to work, do not expect the same Hollywood that you left right? That's what they're saying. These writers, like you might've got better terms, but that's only for those of you who actually get work. And I knew this was going to happen. This is basic economics, basic economics. If you've got to pay your talented labor more, you're going to pay those people more, but you're probably not going to hire as many people. You know, if you're dealing with like skilled labor and really it's like a 95, five rule in streaming. It's like 5% of the shows bring 95% of the audience. And as long as you're keeping the Duffer Brothers happy on Stranger Things, Netflix is pretty good. You know, I mean, that's really all they, they need that couple of shows, like five or six good shows and a nice back, back catalog. And, and they're fine. They only need a couple of hits on Disney plus they need to not make more awful Star Wars and awful Marvel shows. So now as they're out, now they can be like, yeah, we just, we can't afford it, guys. We can do one good show a year, you know, but we can't afford to do like 30 different freaking half-ass shows. So they said there have been several cancellations of shows that had previously been uh, green-lighted, uh, such as Gattaca and Seasoned, um, let's see what, The League of Their Own, Pitch Perfect, Bumper in Berlin, <sighs> pitch fucking perfect with fat Amy. We may not have seen the last of that either. There will definitely be more rescinded renewals that will likely extend to the broadcast networks as they examine their needs for the rest of the season in light of how deep into the fall the strike went. On the broadcast networks, if second or third seasons were ordered before the strike, it doesn't mean they'll stay ordered after the strike. On the broadcast networks, if second or third seasons were ordered before the strike, it doesn't mean they're going to stay ordered after the strike. Uh, Deadline examined why shows early in their run are the most vulnerable. Uh, I know uh, Steve Amell's show got canceled. The wrestling show, Heels, is it Heels? That got canceled. Development cuts. Uh, network and streamers development slates also underwent close examination during the strike and industry sources expect portions of them to be released, especially projects that were in the early stages. There will be a clearing the decks of a lot of stuff. Buyers have reevaluated how much they want to do and areas they want to go in. That has changed. Again, sometimes you can win and lose at the same time. While the current broadcast season has been massively impacted by the strike with just a couple of new and returning scripted series on the fall schedule, the 2024 pilot season can be salvaged. So next year, next year might be your year. Normally buying is almost complete. Yeah, they, they actually said, um, I think it was Variety was like, hey, if you subscribe to streaming services, you can probably cancel like half of them until next fall because it's going to take a long time for new stuff to appear. Series budget and deal roster trims. Even streamers, which have been shelling out 20 million plus an episode for series like Lord of the Rings, Stranger Things, and House of the Dragon, and some Marvel and Star Wars shows would be looking to keep budgets at 5 to 10 million an episode. The streaming gold rush that led to an overall deal boom a couple of years ago is over. While there were no term deal terminations during the WGA strike, a number of packs expired 
during the work stoppage and won't be renewed, I hear. Studios have the option to suspend and extend, adding the length of the strike-related suspension at the end of the overall First Look deal's term. For a number of writers and producers, that won't happen, with only a high-profile with only high-profile talent tied to big shows getting extensions, observers expect. The overall deal market is expected to get tighter, with streamers and studios not looking uh, not only looking how strong writer producers existing shows are, but what uh, what a state of their life cycle the series are in to decide whether or not to sign an overall deal or just a pack for writer producer services. Uh, pendulum swinger bubble burst. So the pullback is not a surprise. I don't think studios will be buying anything for a little while. I don't think studios will be buying anything for a while. Steinberg wrote in his Twitter message. Those writers have to compete for fewer staffing jobs. Hobbs. So writers have to compete for fewer staffing hobs. Staffing jobs available amid show cancellations, fewer script buys, and fewer term deals. The question is how long the pullback will last. Some think that the pendulum is going to swing and is going to bounce back up. A number of top industry people believe the strike-influenced 2023 dip would not be an anomaly with the COVID drop in 2020. Some of the losses are permanent. Over the past year, a broadcast network, the CW, went from 12 shows employing WGA writers to three, all of them producing shorter seasons. Reporting a new all-time high of 599 scripted series in 2022, uh, FX's John Landgriff in January suggested that 2022 marked the peak of peak TV, predicting a decline in 2023. We're not going back to 599 scripted shows ever. The bubble has burst is it so yeah um <laughs> so for those of you who are left congratulations you won the hunger games you, you get you get better terms but there are going to be fewer jobs you know anonymous now they can all go back to work uh back to work cranking out the next remake or sequel yeah like the office there were a lot of bad shows on tv that's true uh, did the bubble burst or did they pop the pimple true a lot of striking writers are now free to go back to being unemployed writers, says ChatGPT. If you're a writer, you should be writing. You don't need a paycheck to be writing. The pickets weren't 24 hours a day. I agree with that. What were you doing? Because I do remember. I do remember that all kinds of like YouTube channels and web shorts and stuff popped up. College humor popped up. Um, Funny or Die popped up during the last strike. They actually kept themselves busy. They weren't doing shitty podcasts you know, for a couple of weeks, they actually were trying to write stuff and you could have written like, like an Amazon book or something, you know, you could have, I don't know, done some only fans. I don't know. You could have done something. You didn't have to be out there picketing, uh, people going to Halloween horror nights at universal. That was kind of stupid. That was a waste of time. Um, I hope anyone with a shred of experience in the industry understood this already. You would think we have been saying this since the beginning. And people are like, clownfish are stupid. Clownfish don't understand. This is a win for all of us. We're all in this together. I'm like, how many shows have you scripted? How many shows have you actually worked on? I don't think you've really worked on many. Were you like 19 years old? Okay, you're a wannabe. You're a wannabe. This is going to happen if there wasn't a strike. It's here. Deal with it. Congrats on the deal. Yeah, exactly. Congrats on the deal. By the way, there are no jobs. Oh, well. Everyone said the deals were dead, never coming back after that, likes that last strike, too. Uh, just like that, the WGA won, and the writers made even less, kind of like when they killed packaging. Uh, it wasn't a strike. You were getting laid off. Ooh. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Time to get your real estate license. Oh, good job. Good job, WGA. You're striking. Got you this. Um, yeah, so... Some, some jobs are Hobbs Freudian slip. Freudian slip. Uh, I wonder when 50% of the WGA is going to figure out they'll never work again. Frankly, it's about time. Too much social promotion and not enough focus on people who actually have the ability to write. Signed, showrunner. Yeah, no, they're, they're 100% right. Again, you cannot tell me that the 11,500 members or whatever ridiculous number of writers that they have in the WGA are all gainfully employed working on series and movies and whatever. I think there are a lot of wannabes and the union is more than happy to take their dues. You know, now Pajiba, which is all like union, union, union. Uh, they had this article, the Hollywood writer strike is over. Now what? And they talk about the shitty podcast, by the way. Um, 
they said that when television comes back, there are going to be fewer television shows. That's because the WGA got much what they wanted from the deal, which is great for better or worse. However, the studios are not likely to increase their overall spending so much as they will cut back on the number of shows they'll air. So they will spend the same amount of money on fewer people. But that's okay, because again, it's that 95-5 rule. Just a couple of shows keep the streamer in business, you know? Um, people subscribe for Stranger Things. They were, before they fucked it up, they were subscribing for The Mandalorian. That's not really the case now, but you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't need to have 100 garbage tier streaming shows. They only need like five or six good ones and people will pay for it. They'll pay for it. This isn't a bad thing. There are way more shows than any of us can watch right now. Unfortunately, it may mean fewer working writers. However, those writers who are working will be compensated better. Pay will increase handsomely. Yes, as it should, because they're only going to green light stuff that's going to work, hopefully. Uh, residuals will, especially those form residuals on streamers, yada, yada, yada. Um, they made some gains in the writer's room, which will be based on the episode orders. So for shows that have been greenlit with six or fewer episodes, studios are required to employ at least three writers and three writer producers, five writers and three writer producers on shows with seven to 12 episodes and six writers and three writer producers for shows with more than 13 episodes. Expect six episode seasons. Remember when we had 26 episode seasons? There was a lot of filler. You could have 12 or 20 people in the writer's room because there were a lot of episodes, but uh, that's not the case now. So there we go, guys. Um, congratulations, I guess. You know, it's this is just, again, economics. They're not going to spend more money. I don't know why people think that these companies have an infinite amount of money. I mean, should they be sharing more of their profits with the people that are bringing it? Absolutely. Do they have to share their profits with people that are just a waste of space? No. No, they do not. They have no moral obligation. They have no legal obligation to do so. And I think that we're just going to see a, a very lean, mean Hollywood. But again, for those of you who are good enough, it uh, looks like you're going to get paid more. So congratulations on that. Uh, a winner is you. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. We'll talk later.